So when I was getting dressed today, I looked all over the house, you know, everywhere. Well, in my room, really, because where else would my clothing be? All over, in all the drawers, in all parts of the closet, everywhere for this scarf. And I couldn't find it. And so I'm like, fine, it's fine. I don't really need the scarf, you know, whatever. No big deal. And then I walked into here and I found the scarf uh, on a mannequin that I have with a vintage dress uh, posed for decoration. So that's weird. I mean, I'm not going to show you the mannequin. I'm not going to do any of that. The only reason I'm telling you is because it's in my head. And if I talk about it, it comes out of my head and I don't have to keep beating myself up about what a bonehead I was that I was looking for a scarf that was literally in front of my face the entire time. So there's that. We're not making scarves today because that'd be weird on a soap channel. I will tell you what we are making in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another round of our rose cosmetic journey. And today we are making a rose face soap. Now, why is this a cosmetic? For two reasons. One, I will never make a face soap with cold processed soap. That is not my journey. That is not what I love. I have done it before. I've experimented with it before. I genuinely prefer to do a rebatch version or a melt and pour version of face soap because I can control my actives and their potency a whole lot better. And also because I can control the pH a little bit. So there's one reason why it's a cosmetic, why it's considered a cosmetic, even though I'm calling it a soap. A face soap. Two, definitionally, it is a cosmetic because I am incorporating solvents in it to create a melt and pour. And so those are the reasons why it is a cosmetic and we are doing it here instead of in the soap category. That said, this particular soap is a rebatch soap from a soap that was made with a rose hip water that I had started to make for a wholesale account thinking I was going to be able to get a white or a lighter color. I was actually going for orange. And when I poured it, it looked darker than dark and just abandoned ship. So I did not put any more scents in it, any other added, nothing. I just poured it, went, this is gonna be a dark bar. And then I knew I could turn this into a really delightful face soap. So that's what we are doing today. We're doing a rebatch. We're going to talk about all the ingredients. We of course are going to test it. And we're going to talk about my opinions on this rose hip, rose, oil, rose, glycerin, rose. Uh, I mean, it's all in there. It's like a rose and rose hip are incorporated in like six ways. So let's go to the video and the making and we can talk about those six ways and why I like it so very much. Okay, so before I give you the recipe for the actual hot process melt and pour version of all of this, I did want to talk about the recipe that went into the making of the cold process. I'm actually going to also tell you about how you can do this without making the cold process in advance. So you don't have to use soap scraps if you don't have any laying around. I happen to have these lying around because this ended up being much, much darker than I anticipated for the design that I was going for for a wholesale account. And so this recipe was 40% coconut oil and 60% green tea seed oil that was used for a rose infusion. So this is going to be rose proper infusion, not rose hip. For the rose hip, that was a water substitution, complete water substitution within the lye solution for rose hip water. And remember how oily that all was. Very, very delightful for sure. And so with this, when it got really dark, I realized, again, I was just going to abandon ship and not use this, but I thought it would be really great to use as a face soap and, you know, change it into something else. So why did I want to use this for a face soap? Well, we know the benefits of rose. We know the benefits of rose hip, collagen, elastin, all of the jazz, right? But also we haven't talked a whole lot about green tea seed oil, which is what I ultimately ended up using to 
uh, to infuse all of these, you know, well, to infuse with the rose and the rose hip. And so green tea essential well, oil in general is packed with tons of vitamins. We've got lots of polyphenols. We've got antioxidants. So it's going to help out with the skin tightening. It's going to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, all of the jazz. And so since I have that plus the coconut oil in there for a good bubble, but not so much coconut oil that I'd be worrying about it being drying, especially since we're going to be turning it into a hot process, I figured this is a really good base to start for a new cosmetic for a face soap. And so I will be adding additional fun stuff to these soap shreds in order to achieve that goal that will also be including my rose hip and my rose extracts and all of the jazz. And so this is the recipe that we're working with for this. It's going to be 45 ounces of the shreds we just discussed, 10 ounces of the infused rose hip glycerin, five ounces of the infused isopropyl alcohol with rose hip, 15 ounces of a wax, and 2.25 ounces of the rose hip water. Now, the reason why I put extra water into all of this is because I am doing a hot process effectively, and I wanted to really help it uh, melt down as quickly as possible. So just a little bit of the water there. That's the water I was talking about, rose hip, how much oil was in it. So delightful. Love that so completely. And the glycerin and the isopropyl alcohol, these are going to be better ratios than what I gave you last month. Because again, I was looking for something that was actively going to be de-sloughing and exfoliating the skin. So I had reversed the isopropyl alcohol and the glycerin that I normally use in my, for my solvents within a recipe like this. So this is going to be with the glycerin as being a humectant, it's going to be really, really nice for that. Isopropyl alcohol is going to help out with the skin clearing, but not so much that you're going to have any real irritations to it. That combined with the benefits of the rose, the benefits of the rose hip, the benefits of the green tea seed oil, it's going to be just really delightful across the board. So in addition to this, I will go ahead and add some collodial oatmeal as well as some activated charcoal once we finish up with the cook and then some essential oils. For this particular one, I did go ahead and bite the bullet and put rose essential oil in it because I did not put any more rose it's, it, itself. I did rose hip instead into the extracts for the melt and pour stage of this. And so I, I bit the bullet. I don't think it's necessary. I'm having a lot of opinions about rose within this month. Can you tell that I don't think that it's as fancy as people seem to think? But I did do that plus frankincense because I love frankincense. And so ultimately what I'm going to be working with is a skin type face soap. So we're looking at working on collagen production, elasticity, fine lines and wrinkles, hydration, moisture, all of the things, you know, for this guy. Which realistically means it's going to be a beautiful batch of soap to use on the face. Now for face soaps, I think I've talked about it a million times on the channel before, but I'm one of those three to five minute washers. I wash my face for three to five minutes, twice a day, every day. I love it. I do all the massaging. I do all the stuff because it's a very fun process for me. So with that said, is soap just a rinse off product, et cetera, and so forth? Well, you're really working it in with this type of, you know, this length of time that you're using. It is still a rinse off product, but you are getting a lot of the benefits from the fatty acid profiles while you're washing your skin. So you're not going to end up with an overly irritated face or any, you know, new acne or anything coming off while the skin is trying to purge and all the jazz. So I put all those in the, well, I put the shreds and the water into the crock pot, cooked it up for about 15 minutes, and now I'm adding all of the solvents and going to let those solvents do their thing and extend all of the uh, crystalline structures in the soap itself, in the soap paste essentially, to create our melt and pour. Now you can do this without having cold process soap shreds on hand. You can just do your recipe as a hot process. I would reduce the amount of water. I use 2.4 times for my water. I would actually do like a 1.5 to the lye for this and cook it to your soap paste air stage and then go ahead and put in everything else. You can do it in one fell swoop. So you don't have to actually make your cold process, let it set up, then shred it down. This is just, you know, for if you have soap scraps on hand, it's always a nice way to reuse or rebatch your, your existing soaps. 
So with this particular recipe, we are also looking at a really, I don't know, easy peasy way to incorporate a whole bunch of active ingredients. So your essential oils, your activated charcoals, your collodial oats, all the jazz, obviously the glycerin being its humectant form and everything with the benefits of the rose and the rose hip in those extra or well, in those infusions for the solvents in a way that is more meaningful than what you would reasonably get from a cold process soap. So for that reason, I really do like using melt and pour for my uh, face soaps. Now this is me putting in the rose and the, the frankincense and all the jazz and yeah, it's a, it's a thing. I also did get a question about how to make a soap paste without using the solvents and everything. Literally the recipe I just gave you that. So you want to use your soap shreds and then do your, and then put in your wax. So your, your hardener of some sort into that along with your, instead of water, I would go ahead and put an oil in and then you can just cook it down the exact same way. Do not put the solvents in, just pour that into a a container, put a lid on it or put it in a, top, a plastic bag, whatever, and it can sit. And then you can have that as a soap paste, a more concentrated soap paste that you can then turn into all manner of things, be it melt and pour or your whipped sugar soap scrubs or your beard cropes, your shaving cropes, your beard washes, all the jazz. So that's a question that I got on Discord and I did want to make sure that it was addressed in a better form, maybe question mark in this video since we're talking about this process of turning melt and pour, or I'm sorry, uh, cold process soap scraps into melt and pour. Now this is going to set up for just a few hours. I'm not going to show you an unmolding or anything, but we are going to go on and do a lather test because this lather is absolutely epic and it's just, it's everything good in this world. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. So let's go check out the lather bit of this soap. Okay, so right off the bat, this has a beautiful lather just right away, and it has just such a good creamy hand feel to it. It's also very slippery. I don't like using this size of soaps as a hand soap. I just put it directly to my face most of the time, but the lather payoff is gorgeous right away. These bubbles are so delightful. It's so creamy, but the lather payoff is actually there. Tiny, tight little bubbles very moisturizing, very nourishing, feels delightful on the face. This has been, I think, one of my better face soap recipes ever since I made the face paste. So my tried and true face soap recipe has always been a face paste, what I call a face paste. You can find that at soapandclay.com, activated charcoal bar. Uh, there's oat milk in it, powdered oat, you know, all the things. It's a delightful bar. This one though, when I started using it, I was like, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna keep using this one for a little bit. Loved the way it felt on my skin. Loved the hand feel. Loved the beautiful, nourishing, tight, tiny bubbles on my face. Very delightful experience. And yeah, I had a glow going on at the end of it. So yeah, for this one, I'm definitely putting this in my going to make again. Might even put it in my line. So, you know, you can check out soapandclay.com if you're interested in that. But for you guys that just did the thing and watched it, you can go make it. And if you want to, tell me how, how, you, how you do with it, you know, and what additives you would put into it for your skin concerns. What are the important things that you look for in a good face soap? And we're not going to have comments about it being the right pH because we've already addressed that a whole bunch on the channel. So assuming that's a given or whatever, what are the enhancements that you would include in something to cleanse your face? Be very interested to know. For the Sudzers, thank you for existing, for being here, for being you. You guys are epic. I hope you're having a great week. It's been so slow to start this week for me. Well, not slow to start, just like impossible to get on track. I'm forever behind, really. So uh, I hope you guys are having a better go at it this week than I am. You probably are not, though, because we're all wildly busy. And thank you for everybody who's telling me in the Discord, don't give up. We don't give up. We're not quitters. Appreciate that. I would never quit you. Not you guys, but other things I might like the HOA board. Anyway, I'm going to go. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of rose infused cosmetic, not soapy, soapy fun. Bye.